Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today I'm very excited to present this Vampire Cauldron deck. So it's kind of half a Sacrifice Cauldron deck, half a Vampire Synergy deck, and there's a lot of overlap as well. So it's kind of the perfect deck to showcase a lot of different synergies. So one of the main build rounds is Voldaren Thrillseeker, 1-1 one, one with backup 2, can pay a mana, sacrifice this creature to deal damage equal to its power to any target. So this is a pretty decent creature by itself. It's a Vampire to fit in our Vampire deck, and it also even draws a card with Welcoming Vampire, since it has power 2 or less when it enters a battlefield. And then the most important synergy is when we have Thrillseeker in the graveyard, we can exile it with our Angathas Soul Cauldron, and essentially give the Thrillseeker's ability to all our other creatures that are in play that have a plus 1 plus 1 counter on them. And Cauldron itself can of course distribute plus 1 counters by using the tap ability and exiling a creature from any graveyard. So Cauldron plus Thrillseeker can quickly turn our team into an army of creatures that can just deal damage to the opponent directly to close out the game. Now of course we've got even more plus one counter synergies with the Iron Apprentice, one of the few non-vampires in the deck, enters with a plus one counter and then we can often sacrifice the Apprentice, maybe using the Thrill Seeker's ability and then move all its counters onto another creature so that can also potentially keep the Cauldron engine going. We also have four copies of Scornblade Berserker, another one of our few non-vampires, an O1 with backup one, can pay a mana, sacrifice this creature and then draw a card. So that's another nice activated ability that we can grant to all our creatures using Agatha's Soul Cauldron. So now if our opponent tries to remove our creature, especially if they try and exile it, we can simply use the Berserker's ability to sacrifice our creature, draw a card, and then it will end up in our graveyard so we can keep using the Cauldron. Then we've got a couple more Vampires as well, with a Dusk Legion a Duelist, a 2-2 with Vigilance, saying whenever one or more plus one counters are put on the Duelist, for the first time each turn we get to draw a card. So the Duelist works quite nicely with all our backup creatures, the Berserker and Thrillseeker, as we can immediately draw a card, but it's also perfect alongside Angatha's Soul Cauldron. If we can also use it during the opponent's turn, we maybe get to draw two cards per turn cycle, and then if the Apprentice dies, we can also move its counters onto the Duelist and draw more. Then we also have four copies of the Blood Tithe Harvester, which also has a nice activated ability where we can use it as removal if we store up a few blood tokens. And besides Harvester, we also have four copies of Voldaren Epicure and two copies of the Maid of Dishonor that can all generate blood tokens to amplify the Harvester's ability. So now we can turn every creature into a Harvester, basically, thanks to Angatha's Soul Cauldron, if we can exile a Harvester with it. And then now every single one-mana creature turns into a very efficient removal spell. And then at 3 mana we already mentioned Welcoming Vampire can be a nice card draw engine since we've got so many cheap creatures throughout the deck. And then at 4 mana some of our curve toppers include the Maid of Dishonor which can make a bunch of blood tokens and also functions as a sacrifice outlet that can maybe help drain the opponent to death. So if we don't have a Thrill Seeker or Berserker in the graveyard that we exiled with Cauldron maybe we can exile our Maid of Dishonor instead and then for 2 mana either sack another creature or blood token to drain the opponent for 2 while gaining 2. And then Henrika, another sacrifice of Vampire here, can uh, choose one of the three modes that hasn't been chosen between each player's sacrifice as a creature, can draw a card at the cost of one life, or transform Henrika into a 3-4 Flying Death Touch lifelink that can maybe pump some of our other creatures as well. And then of course Edgar also makes a lot of sense, pumping up all our other vampires. And when Edgar dies, it turns into the coffin, which will generate an army of 1-1 lifelinking vampire tokens. So that's a steady supply of creatures that we can use alongside our cauldron and grant various abilities. And then at some point Edgar will come back. And if we have a cauldron in play, it's also pretty easy for us to sacrifice Edgar to one of our various abilities. So the opponent doesn't get a chance to exile Edgar with one of their removal spells, which of course we want to avoid, since Edgar needs to die in order order to transform into the coffin so we can make those tokens. And then our mana base also has two copies of Restless Bivouac, which has awesome synergy throughout the deck, since it can put a plus one counter onto one of our creatures when it attacks, so it can put a counter on Duelist to draw more cards, and if the Bivouac has counters itself, we can also maybe use the various abilities like Thrill Seeker or Berserker, thanks to the Cauldron. So the synergies just keep going here. And then a mana base also works thanks to Secluded Courtyard naming Vampire. So that way we can make our three color mana base function, since otherwise we would have to play too many tap lands, which doesn't work in a deck that kind of wants to curve out for the most part. And then uh, lots of dual lands to make the mana base work, and some of the channel lands for added interaction. Plenty of legendaries as well at four mana to give those a discount. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems acceptable. Just missing Cauldron to go with our Thrill Seeker here. 
But even just Duelist into Thrill Seeker is not a bad start. Well, let's see what we're up against. Forest. And name Vampire. Could also wait to play Thrill Seeker so we can back up onto the Apprentice and then sacrifice it. Opponent ramping with the many journeys. Drew another Duelist. So I don't have a fourth line yet to guarantee Thrill Seeker plus Sacrifice next turn. So I think we just play it on Duelist. And there's our Cauldron, perfect. So now we could play Cauldron, sack Thrill Seeker, and then activate Cauldron if we wanted to. Invasion of Zendikar for more ramp. And our opponent could be playing cards like the uh, 7 mana Elemental, which can destroy artifacts. So Cauldron may not be around forever. But uh, for the time being, let's go for Cauldron... And then, I guess it doesn't really matter if we attack first or uh, get the extra counter. Sack Thrill Seeker, go upstairs. And then I could use Cauldron now, draw a card with Duelist to maybe hit our land drop. And then we can already sacrifice Duelist to deal 5 damage. If we get to untap. Iron Apprentice, of course, also quite nice to sacrifice here. So hopefully Cauldron survives. Huntmaster, pretty good at stalling the board, but yeah, now we don't really need to attack with our creatures to win the game. So how do we want to do this? I can just sacrifice Apprentice, counter goes on Duelist, draw card, opponent's at 9, maybe sacrifice Apprentice, Put encounter on the other apprentice. And then use cauldron now. Counter here. Sacrifice for three damage. Move on to the duelist. And then sacrifice for another eight. Which will get the job done. Awesome! Yeah, that's uh, Thrill Seeker plus Cauldron showing its full potential. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Nothing too exciting. Especially without Cauldron. But uh, hoping to find some of our backup creatures. Well, there's Cauldron. So this name's a Vampire. Get in for one play Duelist. And then Cauldron, if Apprentice dies, can uh, start drawing with the Duelist, perhaps. Or they're gonna cut down the Duelist. A Leyline Binding for one mana, yeah, opponent had enough basic land types. Thrill Seeker's a good draw. So, could wait to play Thrill Seeker until we can sacrifice Apprentice right away, and then for now play Cauldron. Not the most impactful play. But it does set up Thrill Seeker a bit better, to the point where I could also sack Thrill Seeker itself, so we guarantee it being in the graveyard for Cauldron. Although with Leyline Binding in the opponent's deck, they can always exile the Cauldron itself, so it's not necessarily a safe investment. I think I still like Cauldron here, and then next turn Thrill Seeker have the spare mana to sacrifice the Apprentice, and take it from there. Flash Gorger, so this may be the Invasion of Alara build of the deck. Okay, so play Thrill Seeker. Counters on Apprentice. And then Sacrifice, killing Flash Gorger. And then we can use Cauldron to get an extra counter here at the very least. And Thrill Seeker is out of range from the uh, Virtue of Persistence as well. Another Flesh Gorger we can take out. So we can exile their Flesh Gorger, which is actually a relevant interaction. 
Also having Cauldron to activate at instant speed can maybe mess with the opponent's graveyard. Although sadly they have a second Leyline Binding going for Cauldron. Okay, so get one last counter here. Can play Edgar attack for six. Opponent can hit back, but then that's a race we're potentially winning. Yeah, that's probably the move. If our opponent were to just hit for 3, we could attack back for 10 and sacrifice for another 6. But I imagine they'll have something else going on here. Opponent just passes with 5 mana, no attacks. So this Flash Gorger may be chumping Thrill Seeker. At which point I could sack it to deal 10 and our opponent doesn't gain any life in the process. Although I'll be a little bit short of winning the game. Made of Dishonor can drain for two eventually, but yeah, we'll probably just let them chum block then. Yep. Could see Cemetery Desecrator next turn, attempt to take out one of our creatures by exiling the Flesh Gorger. So I'm tempted to keep up a mana for Thrill Seeker here. And then for now just play Duelist and Apprentice. And pass it back. There's Mirex. And a Desecrator, as we suspected. So only one creature in their graveyard. And what do they take out? Thrill Seeker, so we can sack it in response, put our opponent to 5. As opposed to take out Desecrator. If I put my opponent to 5 next turn, I attack all out. Opponent has to block Edgar. I think that's better. And then Maid of Dishonor can try and close out the game. So let's go for it. Well, opponent just took 5, so I guess they gave up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems keepable. Could play Berserker, could wait to play it until after we deploy Welcoming Vampire, which I also don't mind. The early damage is not super relevant in this deck. Okay, name Vampire. Now I don't mind playing one creature out, perhaps. And, uh, yeah, let's make it the Epicure. Turn 3 you could go for Thrill Seeker, counters on Epicure. And then turn 4, Welcoming Vampire plus Berserker. Upside of playing Berserker is that we could have sacrificed it in response to, let's say, Virtue of Persistence. So we fizzle the enchantment half, but not sure if they would be all that interested in taking out the 1-1. One -one. So I'll take my turn. Apprentice, also an option. But also a cheap creature to go with our Welcoming Vampire. So we've got options. If we go for Thrill Seeker, opponent probably takes out our creature in response that we try to back up. Could go for Berserker, back up onto the Apicure attack. If they try and take it out, they would probably do it in response to the backup. Now well, let's just go with the Thrill Seeker. Counters on Apicure. And then if they take it out, I'm still left with the Thrill Seeker that we can sacrifice at some point. And a march for one it is. Okay. Hopefully Welcoming Vampire can stick around for a few turns. Celestis, so, so this looks like the Abzan control deck with Up the Beanstalk, which can be quite grindy, has access to a few sweepers. So I'm kind of reconsidering whether or not I want to play Welcoming Vampire plus a one drop, because if they Sunfall me next turn, I guess they would need a white source, which they may or may not have. Then um, they would exile Thrill Seeker, and I don't have it in the graveyard in case we draw Cauldron. But I guess we don't have Cauldron yet, so I shouldn't worry about it too much. Play Welcoming Vampire. Berserker, counter on probably the Thrill Seeker. We get to draw, hit for two. Duelist is also pretty nice with Berserker. And hope to dodge a Sunfall this turn. 
No double white. Put a virtue takes out welcoming vampire. Okay. Do they have more removal? Could also just be a black green mid range deck, I suppose. So now. We've got a couple options, including Iron Apprentice, back up with Berserker, and then put the counters onto the Duelist. That's a pretty nice sequence. I guess I should play the Duelist now. Now, none of this really impacts my attack step. So I could just attack with Thrill Seeker first. And then Berserker. Onto the Apprentice. And if they take out Apprentice, I still move counters onto Duelist and draw a card. I will have to sack Apprentice in my turn, since otherwise the backup ability goes away. Put on Marching the Duelist in response. I guess that works too. So I don't get to draw any cards there. Could sack Apprentice now, move my counters onto the Thrill Seeker. It's not a bad use of my mana here. So maybe I should have done this before attacking to get a bit more damage in. Berserkers can still sacrifice themselves. And then Cauldrons, the card we're looking for, would also counteract the Virtue of Persistence. It's going to be another White March for three, and there's Cauldron. Perfect. Now, sadly, Thrillseeker did get exiled, so that's not available. But we'll make it work. So, play Harvester and Cauldron. Opponents used a fair amount of artifact removal as well here. So hopefully they can't remove the cauldron now. And then... Activate now. Doesn't matter too much, don't have any activated abilities. Attack for one. And there's a sunfall, unfortunately. I'll just sank Berserker itself, so we've got that available. And then hope to find more creatures. Edgar works. And I should keep up one mana so I can sacrifice it in response to an exile effect. Thanks to Cauldron. And yeah, opponent tries to march, but that's not going to work out, as they'll find out here. Sacrifice Edgar. Draw a card. And a commune with spirits is next. Well, we've been fortunate to dodge up the beanstalk so far. Opponent's got one card left. And Henrika... It's pretty nice here. Can draw a card right away. And then... Probably okay to play out a land here. Pass a turn. Cauldron basically counteracts their entire virtue of persistence since we just exile the creature in response to them uh, taking it out. And yeah, once again, Cauldron will grant the backup ability to Henrika, so we can sack it, fizzle the adventure, and draw a card. Is this another march? Looks like it. Cut down. Alright, fair enough. I guess they've got us now, but we'll still fizzle the Virtue of Persistence. Simply won't get to draw a card.
probably okay to ditch Iganjo, although it is an answer to the Restless Cottage, which could also be relevant. So I think I'll hang on to it. Opponent activating the Celestis. But they don't have anything to discard. And a backup Henrika is perfect. So we'll play it. Draw a card. And I think we keep Cauldron available instead of putting a counter on the Vampire. I'll probably discard the Haunted Ridge now. Could do it right away. Sure. Might find something useful. And we can channel Igancho for two mana thanks to Henrika. Don't think we tap out for Duelist. Would rather keep up the Berserker's ability. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Cauldron outgrinding the control deck by sacking our creatures for card advantage. Edgar also quite nice in these grindy matchups. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Couple creatures, some of which we can sacrifice, and then our cauldron. So can't really ask for more. Probably hang on to Berserker so we can maybe play and sacrifice in the same turn. And if Apprentice dies, so be it. Towards the tower, exiles it as well. So we won't have it in the graveyard for Cauldron now. Opponent red white. Yeah, I'm not in a hurry to play Cauldron. Let's just go with Harvester. And then the blood token is also useful as maybe a discard outlet. Already have our Thrill Seeker. And I don't really mind trading. Keeping the board under control. So we could play Thrill Seeker next, put counter on itself, and then next turn set up Cauldron. Okay, perfect. Putin might have a Wandering Emperor at the ready here. Could also go with the Berserker, so we can maybe sacrifice to draw, although might still be better off dealing damage. So, interesting spot. Let's play Cauldron. See if there's a response. Okay, that resolves. And then... Berserker... Counter on Thrill Seeker, I think, still. And then Berserker can sack itself to end up in the graveyard. And we'll see if they have a Wandering Emperor here. Just a Crucible to make two one ones. that's fine. Bowden Chumps. So I have to decide now if I want to sank Thrill Seeker to draw. Although, not necessarily expecting a Sweeper next turn. So I think we're fine to just pass a turn. And then at the very least I can sacrifice Berserker. Ginger Brute's fine. So we can block the 1-1. One, one. Sank Berserker. And now our opponents got the Wandering Emperor. Alright, they were patient and they got uh, paid off here. So now they can exile Thrill Seeker and I won't have it in the graveyard for Cauldron. But I have a backup so I didn't really mind too much. So that all happens. This is what you get for hurting my people. Can always exile an opponent's card here. Which could matter. So we've got a couple of options, Edgar being one of them. And then we can use Cauldron to give it the Berserker's ability. So I can sacrifice it in response to potential exile effect. And then next turn maybe sack it to the Thrill Seeker's ability. Counter on Ginger Brutes. Remember your training. 
So they can still play Virtue to have their creatures back on defense to chump Edgar. And it's going to be a Gutter Dweller instead. Fair enough. So they are going wide for this Virtue, which is pretty scary. Could use a Blood Token, discarding Harvester, which I'm probably not going to need right away. Although, I do want to make sure I have enough creatures to actually combine with Thrillseeker and Cauldron. So, for now we can wait. Find another Harvester. So step one, Edgar attacks Emperor, opponent probably chumps. And then... I've got a couple options from there. Probably want to deal with a Gutter Dweller. So Thrill Seeker can put counters on itself. And then sacrifice it to take out Gutter Dweller. And then now I can use Cauldron on Thrill Seeker. And I uh, could do it now. And then finish off Wandering Emperor. Could wait for them to minus, but they're probably not going to minus on Edgar, so they would just be making a token. So I think I'm better off just taking out Wandering Emperor now. And then we'll still get to transform Edgar. And then I think we'll be able to keep up with the opponent's creatures, even through Virtue of Loyalty. Our swords will cross again. So take four. Make a vampire. And it's perfect that we have all this sacrifice fodder. So play Harvester. Play Epicure. And then Cauldron. Exiling the opponent's Gutter Dweller. Although I guess Harvester could still be useful since we have a bunch of blood tokens here. And then I need to make sure we put counter on Harvester if we want to take out Ginger Brutes. And I could do it now while they cannot sacrifice it to gain three. Okay, and then I might discard Harvester with a Blood Token here, we'll see. Still have two more Harvesters for Cauldron, so it's not a huge priority. And the air opponent explodes, all our creatures turning into Thrill Seekers. It's going to make it very hard for the opponent to preserve a board state. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is pretty unexciting. Although our mana is good, and we've got ways to kind of churn through the deck with blood tokens and the backup ability. So it's maybe not as bad as it looks at first glance. I would like to back up onto the Apprentice and then sacrifice it. So now we can just play Harvester. And then next turn we can make that play. Apprentice, back up onto the Apprentice, sacrifice it, and then move two counters onto the Harvester. Okay, put on green-white with a Beast Caller, which is potentially worth taking out with Harvester here before it gets any bigger. And I shouldn't try to outrace a more dedicated aggro deck, to be fair. So yeah, I think it's safest to just answer the Beast Caller. And then, what's our play? Can go double Epicure and Apprentice, and then next turn Berserker. We gotta know our role in the matchup. Okay, and then next turn maybe Berserker back up onto the Apprentice, sacrifice it. The 
Brawlers next, so it's a plus one counter deck. And a Bond Warden. Henrika is pretty solid. So you can play that, make them sack a creature. And then probably sack an Epicure for now. Or we can draw a card, since our opponent can sack Bond Warden, move counters onto Brawler. Which doesn't do a whole lot for us, to be fair. Yeah, let's just draw while we can. Okay, Duelist. Now we can put the counters onto the Duelist, either from Apprentice or Berserker right away. No attacks. And Kodama's next. Plus another Bond Warden. So Brawler could grow up to a 4-4. Do we see them attack? We do. So I could block with basically my whole team, and then our opponent just takes out Henrika and an Epicure, most likely. I think that's acceptable, because the sacrifice effect's not going to be super relevant. With her opponent having an 0-1 Bond Warden. And Brawler's only going to get bigger. Alright, backup Henrika's not bad, I suppose. Although I'm still kind of liking the Duelist and Berserker play. And then question is whether I want to back up onto the Apprentice and sack it for two counters, make a 4-4 Duelist. Or if we just back up onto the Duelist itself and then still have Apprentice to maybe chum block and move its counters to draw a second time. Although it doesn't line up quite as well versus uh, Kodama, perhaps. Yeah, let's just make the... Apprentice play. And this also draws us a card with a backup ability. Okay, and then pass. Won't be able to chum block the trampling Kodama all that well. But could consider a trade. Ooh, Archangel Elspeth, gonna give Kodama flying now. So, that's gonna be tricky to block. At least I assume that's what they'll do. Thrill Seeker can be a way to finish off a Planeswalker next turn at least. So it's gonna be interesting. Opponent just making a soldier. And no attack. Okay. Cauldrons, perfect. Okay, so... Where do we want to begin? Thrill Seeker... Counters on Duelists. Would make it a 6-6. Attack Elspeth, give the opponent a chance to chum block with a creature, and then I'm probably sacking Duelist anyway. But yeah, that's a good starting point. Okay, let's move to attackers. Opponent jumping with a 1-2 Bond Warden, so they can move its counters onto Kodama, presumably. That's fine. Okay. So now I still have the option of sacking the Duelist to take out Elspeth, or we can take out Kodama. I think Elspeth is a little scarier right now. And then probably pass so we can make sure we can sack Thrill Seeker so it doesn't get exiled somehow. And then next turn, hopefully go to town with Cauldron. But not looking at the graveyard. For now, Kodama attacks. Go to take it. Bonin gets to find a land. Now if we take out enough of the opponent's small creatures... We can eventually Henrika make them sack Kodama. Opponent goes for Brawler. Enters as a 3-3. Yeah, let's still take out their smaller stuff. Okay, 
And then I can play Cauldron. Could play Apprentice, which we can then immediately sacrifice with the Thrill Seeker's ability. So maybe just pass a turn for now. And see what happens. Opponent's got their own Apprentice. It's gonna trigger Brawler. That works. And an attack for 9. So with Cauldron, counter on Apprentice, make it a 2-2. Sacrifice it for 2 damage. So I can deal 2 to the Brawler, and then 2 counters on a Blocker to block the Brawler to finish it off. I think is the play. They'll still get to trample and get a land. And then counters on Epicure. Does this make sense? Maybe with the same play I should have just taken out Kodama. But it's possible they have another one in hand. So now what's my play? Probably keep Berserker around. Next turn I can play Epicure, play Henrika. Doesn't leave enough mana to use the Thrill Seeker's ability anywhere. Because yeah, the plan is kill the two small things with Thrill Seeker abilities and then Henrika sack Kodama. But I don't think I'll have quite enough resources to make that happen next turn. But uh, let's take our draw. Find a land. So... Let's see here. Play Henrika, play Epicure. Leaves me one mana. I guess we can also use the Harvester since we have three blood tokens and then take out Kodama that way. That's probably better. Yeah, let's try that. And then I have to use a Berserker since it's the only creature without summoning sickness. Does this work? It does. Okay, and then now Epicure plus Enrica. Can just draw a card. Maybe should have started there in case we draw two drop. Okay, and then I'll probably be discarding Cliffs to the Blood Token. Feels like we're kind of at a turning point. Ozolith is pretty good. Counters on Apprentice. Or Bond Warden, I guess they have the same effect of moving their counters around. So our goal should be to just take out all the opponent's creatures here, which should be feasible. Welcoming Vampire and another Cauldron. So let's say we discard Cauldron to the Blood Token. Perfect, find another cheap creature. So welcoming Vampire into Berserker. Berserker can put counter on itself, so we can use Thrill Seeker to kill Apprentice and then sacrifice with Henrika. That works. So take out Apprentice. Counters on Bond Warden. And then move to attackers. Each player sacrifices a creature, Epicure down. And then attack. And then I may as well use Cauldron. Although possible we can mess with the opponent's graveyard if they have another recommission, so I'll just wait. Even though I miss out on one damage here. And then, yeah, we should be able to take over from here. Another Elspeth is beatable. Have faith in my sword. 
they get to grow the token. So we could take it out in response by using Thrill Seeker's ability and putting a counter on one of our creatures. Probably Henrika at this point. Next turn we can transform Henrika, attack Elspeth. I think we let that slide. We'll be able to deal with a token afterwards. And then for now use Berserker, which we don't have yet in our collection. And then go to Attackers. Transform. Also have the Bivouac available. Do we want to turn that into a creature, perhaps? Yeah, I can make it a 4-4, thanks to Cauldron. And then I could also use Henrika's ability for 3 mana. But, uh... Let's leave some mana untapped for Cauldron shenanigans. So, let's see here. Probably want to take out the token before they grow it once again with Ozolith. So we could just sack the bivouac using Thrill Seeker's ability to take out the token. Okay. And then pass it back. Opponent's got nothing. Cauldron, end of turn. Can also see if there's anything interesting in the opponent's graveyard. Don't see any useful activated abilities, but sure. Get rid of Kodama. Take our turn. And then we should be able to cross the finish line pretty easily by using the Thrill Seeker's ability. And Gar can also pump the team. Alright, we should have most angles covered. Attack for 9. Opponent did find a Wandering Emperor here. I don't think it's going to matter since we can just sank the creature they try and exile. Finally, I'm home. And go upstairs. Four more. And then just sacrifice. Welcoming Vampire for the win. Awesome. Well, this game showcased some of our uh, synergies quite nicely. The grindy elements, Cauldron taking over, getting to draw quite a few cards, and also using our creatures as removal. So, yeah, couldn't have gone any better. Alright, so we got to see our Cauldron Vampires in action, and I'm very happy with how the deck turned out. Now, this may not be the most competitive choice for the ranked ladder, probably gonna lose a lot of games to Monorad Aggro on the play, curving out, or maybe a control deck, packing sweepers like Farewell especially, since that can exile artifacts and our graveyard alike. At least against Sunfall, there's a bit of counterplay, we can sacrifice our creatures, so they end up in the graveyard, and then we can still use Cauldron to good effect, but Farewell is just a bit too much for us to handle, so there's definitely some weak points to this strategy, but overall I've been having a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of play to the deck as well, since you can sacrifice a lot of different creatures in a lot of different ways, and it feels like you've always got a chance, especially against opposing creature strategies. So again, I'm very happy with how the deck turned out, probably one of my favorite decks I've played in recent memory, just don't expect it to be the most competitive choice out there. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.